Hello and welcome to the Gamer Hobbit. Today we are covering one of the best and biggest vanilla plus mods, Quark, by Vasky. Quark is a mod that aims to enhance your experience in Minecraft, by adding new features or tweaks that could be in future versions, but without breaking the feel of vanilla. This mod should cater to most players, by adding a variety of new blocks, biomes, mobs, decorations, tweaks, and plenty more. To start things off, Quark overhauls the Minecraft caves to have more variety in life, aiming to give the player a reason to spend more time underground. Ten new underground biomes have been added to add diversity to the caves, which are placed accordingly to the biome you are in. Some of the biomes are rarer than others, whether it's because the biome it's under is harder to find, or whether the underground biome spawns at a lower rate. For example, the slime underground biome only spawns at the swamps, which although swamps spawn fairly frequently, the slime underground biome is much harder to find. Each underground biome is spiced up with an assortment of blocks and items that can be useful for new building and decoration options, or to enable the player to obtain a rarer item easier. For example, the crystal cave biome spawns under any biome that is in an ocean, and in them contain crystal clutters that come in nine colors, which can be used to create crystal panes, colored runes for enchanting, or to be used as a natural means to light up caves. Additionally, if the crystals are placed deep underground, they can grow up to four blocks tall. To complement the caves, there's also a rare chance to encounter Mega Caves and Mega Dungeons. Mega Caves are mostly hollowed out, containing mostly lava and some ores, but can come in handy when making underground bases. Mega Dungeons feature a wide array of challenges and rooms, with many mobs to fight and lots of treasure to loot. There are also two new mobs that can be found, the Stoneling and the Wrapped. The Wrapped are a zombie variant, which only spawn in a spider nest biome, which inflicts slowness when hit and have a high chance to drop cobwebs, making them farmable. Stone lanes are a new passive mob that roam in the lower levels, holding some random item above them. If you're quick, you can kill them and take the item they're carrying. They also have a rare chance of dropping a heart of diamond, which can allow you to have your very own stone lane for yourself. That can carry items for you, follow you if you have a diamond, and most importantly, they love to eat stone. Underground caves also feature some smaller features that generate in most underground biomes, including stalagmites, which can only be harvested with silk touch, some new stone types, and monster boxes, which spawn a clutter of mobs before breaking, that contain some rare loot when killed. With these features, and several other additions, the caves have a lot to offer, and its vast variation and a somewhat of unique items and blocks gives it an incentive for players to delve into the caverns more than just diamonds. Quark doesn't stop there, as it also adds stuff to both the nether and the end. Throughout the nether, Basalt will spawn in clutters, which can be used to craft stair and slab variants, alongside a polished variant too. Obsidian spikes can be found jarring out of the lava floors, with a rare chance of encountering a tall spike with a light on top. On the tops of them, contain some loot, but be warned, as the journey will be treacherous and unforgiving to the player, as blazes will try to send the player into the fiery pits below. A new mob, the Foxhound, is quite an aggressive one, and will set the player on fire if attacked. If you're a bold one, Drink a fire resistance potion and feed them coal to tame them. Once tamed, they behave similar to wolves, except they can accelerate the cooking time in furnaces, which proves to be a useful and cool companion to have for your travels. And finally, soul sand can be crafted into soul sandstone, which can make stairs, slabs, and walls. Moving into the end, the player can find a new ore, biotite. Unlike other ores, however, this only spawns in clutters on the main island when an ender dragon dies, giving players an incentive to summon the ender dragon. When harvested, it drops as a shard, which when combined into a biotite block, can be used to make slabs, stairs, and decorative blocks. Duskbound blocks can be crafted from purple and obsidian, which include slab and stair variants alongside a duskbound lamp, which requires enderpearls. Endermites can bury into any nearby purple blocks, transforming themselves into a shulker in the process, allowing players to acquire shulker shells more easily. Adding features like this into both the nether and the end give the players a further incentive to venture beyond the overworld, and also make some of the more useless blocks and items useful. Quark also caters for the builders, adding in many new blocks to decorate your world with. Several existing items of vanilla can now be crafted into compressed blocks, including sugarcane, gunpowder, and charcoal. Foods like apples, potatoes, and beetroot can be compressed into crates, adding some much needed decoration for markets. There's also some new blocks, such as Midori, a green counterpart to purple, that is made with cactus paste, five new stone types, which can be used to make bricks, stairs, and slab variants, bookshelves, ladders, and chests can now be made with every wood type, all with different textures. All stone types from both vanilla and quark 
can now be crafted into bricks, chisel bricks, pillars, or pavements, which can further add options for building. For someone who wants their world to be more medieval, framed glass will be your new best friend for windows. Crafted with some iron ingots and glass, these new blocks are your new go-to for making some excellent window designs, coming in both full blocks and paints. Shingles, a new type of tile block, can be used to add some well-needed colour and style to your roofs, crafted from terracotta. To make your nature builds and paths a little more realistic, leaf carpets and turf blocks can help you with that. And finally, vertical slabs and stained wooden plaques are craftable, allowing the player to have many new building options. Quark also features many quality of life improvements to the game that should have been implemented to vanilla long ago. Nether brick fence gates can finally be crafted, allowing you to not resort to wooden fence gates or leaving a gap. When mounting, your food hunger will still display and the jump bar is only visible when jumping, with the XP bar shown otherwise. Boats can now have chests on them, which can be accessed like viewing a horse's inventory. Armor stands now have arms to hold weapons, tools, and other items, allowing you to feature your legendary diamond gear that defeated the Ender Dragon. Signs can be edited by right-clicking, saving you a huge amount of time. Double doors can open together when opened. Dirt blocks can turn into path blocks with shovels, allowing you to not wait until it turns back to grass, and heaps more. These features are small on what they do, but they drastically improve your experience, and pretty much every player would agree they should be in vanilla. Finally, are some extra features which could spice up your world. Cows, pigs, and chickens now have randomized textures that complement the horses, cats, and llamas. You can switch between hot bars, which can come in handy for builders and survivalists alike. Dungeons and stronghold libraries have a chance to contain ancient tomes, rare loot which only have the highest level of an enchantment. When combined in an anvil with an enchanted book of the same level, it will raise the enchantment to one above the max level. Speaking of enchantments, coloured runes can also be found in dungeons, which when applied to enchanted items, will change the colour of said enchanted item to the rune's colour, giving you some much needed customization to your own weapon or armour. If you want your runes coloured however, you cannot have Optifine installed, otherwise it will not work, which is unfortunate for people who enjoy using shaders or prefer to move the gameplay. Cartographers sell maps that lead to certain biomes. Now you can finally find that jungle or mushroom biome you've been searching for. Pickerangs are a new tool that when thrown, will break the block it touches and comes back to you, which can also be enchanted. Finally, crabs and frogs are new passive mobs, which can add some extra life to beaches and swamps. This is just a taste of what Quark offers. The rest is for you to discover. If there's anything that you don't want or wish to alter, then the config lets you have complete control over the mod. For a mod that is so large, Quark does an impressive job of adding and implementing new additions and tweaks that could be in vanilla Minecraft, with only a couple that could feel out of place. Quark has a lot of new features that suit both builders and adventurers alike, whilst making some of the more useless items and blocks finally have some reason to gather. Whether you want a vanilla plus experience or not, Quark is a mod that should be featured in essentially every mod pack. Thanks to Vasky for making such an excellent and well thought out mod, and link to download it is in the description below. Before I end the video, I'm going to allow you all to vote for the next mod showcase. On the top right corner of the screen, there should be a poll that has 5 different mods to choose from. All of these mods have been requested by you over the course of several months, and have been selected randomly. The mod with the highest votes will be covered for the next mod showcase, with the others being reselected at random for future videos. And that is all for today. If you want to see a mod get showcased, then drop a comment and suggest it, and maybe it'll be featured in a future video. Thanks for watching everyone, and have a good day.